So that's why I started a company in 2018. And essentially, it's a cloud-based software company that helps doctors make the right decisions faster. Essentially, they run their diagnostic and treatment decisions through a series of checklists. Now we're a little bit above 250. And in return, we can provide very rich data about how entire health systems are doing, but also how the individual um, doctor is doing. So we're working in clinics, emergency, room, um, emergency rooms, and health centers. And essentially, this is the flow. The doctor is about to make a decision about after speaking with the patient and examining the patient. So they pull up what they think it is. In this case, I'm going to choose pelvic inflammatory disease. And then the checklist will appear. And then within this checklist, as they select what applies or doesn't apply, the system writes the note. So in this case, there was a lower abdominal pain, there's vaginal discharge, can't walk, et cetera, et cetera. Eventually, the checklist will look something like this. And we take every opportunity to try to teach and guide the decision making, assuming that this is really pelvic inflammatory disease. So in the upper left, you see that this is just a basic, basic description of pelvic inflammatory disease. The second is a differential. We also remind people, hey, by the way, this is the criteria. You better see that or you don't have pelvic inflammatory disease. And finally, we have a red light, green light system, sort of a gaming system, where the doctor can do whatever they want, but when they close that note, it's recorded as red, green, or, or, or red, or you know, however they did. So in this case, it's saying, wait a second, you didn't get the diagnosis right. You said, what? How did I not get the diagnosis right? You would click that box, and essentially would say like, well, you got most everything, but to really make that diagnosis, you need to either show cervical motion tenderness or agnexal tenderness. And then the ideal user, they'll then go back and say, oops, I have to do a pelvic exam to make that diagnosis. So they'll go back, they'll do that, they'll do that uh, exam, they might find cervical motion tenderness, and then it would go to diagnosis positive. In this case, then they'll go back and say, well, I feel so good. I got it. I got a smiley face on the diagnosis. In this case, the, the, the imaginary user got the treatment right, and they can confirm that by, again, looking at a, a tree. The net effect is to build a very rich dashboard of results that I frankly haven't even seen in this country. We can tell the individual or tell the leader of the system if people are receiving the care according to the evidence base. Of course, no one really cares about that. What they care about is this. They care about the business of medicine. So if we can show them how many patients were seen, how much revenue that meant, what are the top drugs being used, what drugs don't you have that you need, then we can get this, which is probably the more interesting information. And together, it defines what Dr. Woodson was saying is value, the ability to link the quality of healthcare with how much it costs. So how have we done? I think we're doing OK, at least in terms of what we set out to do across our client base we've been able to increase adherence to protocols from a baseline of 30% to 80%, not across the disease of the day, but all diseases, and in a fairly quick fashion. And we sort of cook the books. If, you, we, if the whole system is based on a checklist, obviously you're, you know, you're gonna follow the checklist. The other exciting part is that it's what most governors or you know, health policy people are excited about. We have been able to decrease the use of medicines pretty much about by 50% across the board. Now, the doctors who own the pharmacists or the pharmaceutical companies, they don't love that. But in, at least in terms of these public facilities, they're all about that.